25 strange royal customs you won't believe still exist. Can you imagine not being allowed to eat certain foods or having to wear a certain color every day or even having to bow to your relatives? These are just a few of the strange customs that royals have to follow. Royalty and monarchies around the world have a long history filled with unique customs and traditions. While many of these customs have evolved or disappeared over time, some persist today. Here are 25 strange royal customs that might surprise you. Number 1. Changing of the Guard The changing of the guard, a daily spectacle at Buckingham Palace and other royal residences, is a time-honored tradition where the old guard hands over responsibility to the new guard. The ceremony's a meticulously choreographed display of military precision and pageantry, accompanied by the stirring sounds of a military band. It symbolizes the continuity of protection for the reigning monarch and is a popular attraction for tourists and visitors, offering them a glimpse into the rich heritage of the British monarchy. The guards resplendent in their distinctive red uniforms and tall bearskin hats march in perfect synchronization, creating a visual and auditory spectacle that captures the essence of royal tradition. Number 2. Royal Ascot The Royal Ascot is a renowned British horse racing event that combines sporting excellence with high fashion and royal patronage. Held annually in June, it attracts attendees dressed in extravagant hats and elegant attire. The racecourse's rich history dates back to 1711, and it remains a fixture on the social calendar, often attended by members of the royal family. The highlight is the Gold Cup Race, a prestigious event coveted by jockeys and owners alike. The Royal Ascot embodies the British tradition of combining horse racing with aristocratic pomp and pageantry, making it a unique and celebrated occasion in the United Kingdom. Number 3. Royal Banquets Royal banquets steeped in tradition and pageantry are meticulously orchestrated affairs that adhere to a strict order of service. These elaborate gatherings are not just about dining, they're opportunities for monarchs to display their regal authority and engage in diplomatic exchanges. A typical royal banquet begins with a ceremonial procession, where attendees dressed in formal attire are ushered into the banquet hall. Seating arrangements are carefully crafted, reflecting hierarchical and diplomatic considerations. The meal itself follows a precise structure, often featuring multiple courses, each with its specific dishes and wines. The toasts, speeches, and interactions during the banquet are governed by etiquette, with designated moments for toasting the monarch and exchanging pleasantries. Number 4. The Garter Ceremony the Garter Ceremony is a prestigious annual event in the United Kingdom that dates back to the 14th century. It's closely associated with the Order of the Garter, which is the oldest and one of the most esteemed orders of chivalry in England. The ceremony typically takes place at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle, and it's attended by members of the British royal family, including the reigning monarch. During the Garter Ceremony, new members, both royal and non-royal, are invested in the order. The most prominent part of the ceremony involves the knights and ladies of the garter, who wear distinctive dark blue velvet robes and a garter belt displaying the order's motto, Oni soi qui mal y pense. Shame on him who thinks evil of it. The event includes a procession, a religious service, and the installation of new knights and ladies. It's a solemn and elegant affair that celebrates the history and chivalric ideals associated with the order of the garter. Number 5. Coronation Ceremony The coronation ceremony is a centuries-old tradition that marks the formal ascent of a monarch to the throne. It's a meticulously choreographed event filled with symbolism and religious significance. One of the central aspects of the coronation is the anointing of the monarch with holy oil, a sacred act that dates back to biblical times. During this solemn moment, the Archbishop of Canterbury, or a relevant religious authority, anoints the sovereign on their hands, head, and sometimes other parts of the body, with special consecrated oil. This act symbolizes the monarch's divine right to rule, drawing parallels to ancient kings and biblical figures who were anointed as chosen leaders by a higher power. It also signifies the monarch's commitment to uphold their duty to serve the nation and its people. The coronation ceremony is a powerful representation of the continuity and tradition of monarchy, connecting each new ruler to the history and spiritual foundations of the monarchy. Number 6. Royal Maundy Money Dating back to the 13th century, 
The Royal Mondi is a unique custom where the reigning monarch distributes specially minted Mondi money to a select group of elderly citizens. This event typically takes place on Maundy Thursday, the day before Good Friday. The recipients, chosen for their exemplary service to their communities, receive coins that symbolize the monarch's commitment to charitable work. The number of recipients corresponds to the monarch's age, reflecting a tradition that combines religious significance with a philanthropic gesture, highlighting the enduring connection between the monarchy and the people it serves. Number 7. Wearing Crowns the tradition of wearing crowns by monarchs and royalty holds deep historical and symbolic significance. Crowns are not just ornate accessories. They are powerful symbols of authority, sovereignty, and divine right. A royal crown typically consists of precious metals and gemstones, often adorned with symbols, crosses, or other religious motifs. The act of placing a crown on a monarch's head during a coronation ceremony is a powerful ritual that signifies their ascension to the throne and their role as the chosen ruler of their nation. The design of a crown can vary significantly, depending on the country and its cultural and religious traditions. For example, the British monarch's crown, known as the Imperial State Crown, is a dazzling piece adorned with over 2,800 diamonds. Number 8. Royal Heirs Sleeping Separately The tradition of requiring royal heirs to sleep separately often in different bedrooms, has deep historical roots rooted to the desire to ensure the legitimacy and security of the royal lineage. In many monarchies, particularly in Europe, maintaining a clear and unquestionable line of succession was of paramount importance. By having the heir sleep separately from their spouses, it was believed that any potential disputes over parentage could be avoided. Additionally, this practice served to prevent any harm or danger befalling both the heir and their spouse in a single incident such as an assassination attempt. It was a precautionary measure to safeguard the future of the monarchy. Number 9. Knighthood The tradition of knighthood is a centuries-old custom steeped in chivalry and honor. Knighthood involves a formal ceremony during which an individual, often a distinguished warrior or a loyal subject, is dubbed a knight by a monarch or a high-ranking noble. The core values of knighthood typically revolve around courage, loyalty, and commitment to defending the realm. The ceremony itself is a solemn affair, with the candidate kneeling before the lord or sovereign, who then bestows the accolade, a symbolic touch or gentle blow with a sword, upon their shoulders. This act symbolizes the candidate's transformation into a knight, marked by a profound sense of duty to protect their liege and uphold the code of chivalry. The knight's newfound status carries responsibilities that encompass not only military prowess, but also moral conduct. Number 10. Bowing and Curtsying Bowing and curtsying are age-old customs that dictate how individuals should greet and show respect to royalty. The act of bowing involves a man lowering his upper body, typically from the neck or waist, while a woman performs a curtsy by briefly bending her knees and lowering her body. The depth of the bower curtsy depends on the individual's rank and relationship to the monarch. In British royal etiquette, for example, the more significant the royal's position, the deeper the bow or curtsy should be. A slight nod or head bow may suffice for lesser royals, while a profound curtsy or full body bow is reserved for the reigning monarch. These customs are not merely symbolic, they convey respect and acknowledgement of the monarch's authority and position. Number 11. Royal Christmas Message The Royal Christmas Message, a beloved tradition in the United Kingdom, involves the reigning monarch addressing the nation via a televised broadcast on Christmas Day. This annual message provides an opportunity for the monarch to reflect on the past year, offer words of encouragement and hope, and emphasize key themes that resonate with the public. The message typically touches on matters of national importance, unity, and shared values. While it's evolved with the times, the tradition started with King George V's radio broadcast in 1932 and has continued ever since. The royal Christmas message is a symbol of continuity and connection between the British monarchy and its subjects, reinforcing the sense of a royal family that's both accessible and relatable especially during a time of year when families and togetherness are celebrated. It's a unique way for the monarch to reach out and connect with the people of the UK and the Commonwealth. Number 12. Royal Titles 
Royal titles and their order of usage are fascinating aspects of aristocratic culture. In the British royal family, for instance, members hold a slew of titles, each reflecting different roles and honors. For instance, Queen Elizabeth II was known by her full title as Her Majesty Elizabeth II by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and of her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith. The sequence and selection of these titles depends on the context and location. In the UK, she was typically referred to as the Queen or Queen Elizabeth, but in other empires, she may have been addressed differently. The order and usage of these titles serve to underscore the intricate hierarchy within the royal family and its historical significance. Number 13. The Royal Muse The Royal Muse, located in London, is a historic institution that serves as the official repository for the British royal family's collection of carriages, horses, and cars. Its primary purpose is to provide transport and logistical support for various royal events and ceremonies. One of the most notable carriages in its collection is the extravagant Gold State Coach, a symbol of opulence and tradition. The Royal Muse is not just a place for storing carriages, it's a living museum of transportation history. Visitors can explore the magnificent carriages, some dating back centuries, which have been used for coronations, weddings, and other state occasions. Additionally, the Muse houses the royal horses and cars used by the royal family. Number 14. Royal Yacht Britannia The Royal Yacht Britannia holds a special place in the history of the British monarchy. For over 40 years, from 1954 to 1997, this majestic vessel served as the official yacht of the British royal family. Designed to combine regal elegance with modern functionality, Britannia was used by Queen Elizabeth II and other members of the royal family for state visits, diplomatic missions, and private vacations. Britannia wasn't just a mode of transportation, it was a floating palace. The yacht boasted luxurious accommodations for the royal family, complete with sumptuous bedrooms, elegant lounges, and a grand dining room. Its crew of skilled sailors and officers ensured that the vessel operated smoothly. Number 15. Royal Burial Sites St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle holds a significant place in British royal history as a resting place for numerous monarchs and members of the royal family. This exquisite Gothic chapel, founded by Edward IV in the late 15th century, has served as a royal necropolis for centuries. Inside its hallowed walls lie the final resting places of some of the most prominent figures in British history. The chapel's choir contains the tomb of King Henry VIII and his favorite wife, Jane Seymour, while the royal vault houses the remains of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, among others. Notably, the chapel also serves as the final resting place for more recent members of the royal family, including the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret. Number 16. Royal Stand-Ins During rehearsals for major royal events such as Trooping the Color and other formal ceremonies, a peculiar tradition involves the use of stand-ins for members of the royal family. These stand-ins are individuals who bear a resemblance to the royal family members they're representing both in terms of physical appearance and uniform. The use of stand-ins is crucial for logistical reasons, as it allows organizers to fine-tune the intricate details of these grand events without inconveniencing or revealing the plans of the actual royal family members. This practice ensures that the ceremony runs smoothly on the day of the event. Number 17. Swan Masters Swan Masters, or Swan Uppers, are individuals responsible for conducting the annual census of swans on the River Thames, a tradition dating back to the 12th century. This peculiar custom, known as swan upping, involves meticulously counting and marking swans to assess their well-being and ownership. The event typically lasts for five days in July and is attended by representatives of the King Swan Maker, the Worshipful Company of Vintners, and the Worshipful Company of Dyers. The primary purpose of swan upping is to ensure the protection and conservation of mute swans, which were once considered royal birds and a valuable food source. Today, the tradition is more ceremonial than practical, but it underscores the historical significance of swans in British culture and their continued status as royal birds. Number 18. Beefeaters Beefeaters is the colloquial name for the yeoman warders 
a distinctive and historic group of ceremonial guardians responsible for safeguarding the Tower of London. These iconic figures, often seen in their red and gold Tudor-style uniforms, have a lineage dating back to the reign of Henry VII in 1485. The term beefeater is believed to have originated from their historic privilege of receiving daily rations of meat, including beef, from the royal kitchen, a coveted perk in earlier times. Today, they serve as both guides and security personnel, providing informative tours to visitors while ensuring the tower's security. Number 19. The Ceremony of the Keys The Ceremony of the Keys is a nightly tradition at the Tower of London that has persisted for centuries. Dating back over 700 years, it involves the chief yeoman warder, accompanied by armed guards, locking the main gates of the tower. The ritual is a symbolic act of securing the fortress and safeguarding the crown's jewels and treasures housed within it. It's performed with great precision and solemnity, signifying the unyielding commitment to protecting this historic site. Visitors can also witness this unique ceremony, though it's conducted in near silence to maintain its gravity and tradition. Number 20. The State Opening of Parliament The State Opening of Parliament is a grand British royal tradition held annually. During this event, the reigning monarch delivers a speech outlining the government's legislative agenda for the upcoming parliamentary session. The ceremony is marked by regal splendor, with the monarch wearing the imperial state crown and traveling in the opulent Diamond Jubilee state coach. It symbolizes the monarch's constitutional role and the cooperation between the monarchy and the government. This centuries-old custom is a vivid reminder of the United Kingdom's rich history and the enduring relationship between the crown and its parliamentary system. Number 21. Trooping the Color This is an annual British royal tradition that celebrates the ruling monarch's official birthday. This grand military parade, dating back to the 17th century, involves the Trooping the Color ceremony, where a regiment's flag or color is displayed and paraded in front of the monarch. It's a vibrant spectacle of precision drills, colorful uniforms, and military bands. The event concludes with the royal family's appearance on the balcony of Buckingham Palace, where they greet the crowds and watch a spectacular fly past by the Royal Air Force. It's a beloved public event that highlights the pageantry and unity of the British monarchy. Number 22. The Lord Mayor's Banquet Dating back to the 12th century is a grand annual event in London attended by the reigning monarch. Hosted by the Lord Mayor of London, it marks a moment when the City of London, separate from the national government, pledges its loyalty to the crown. This formal banquet serves as a symbol of the enduring relationship between the city and the monarchy. It's a splendid affair featuring a lavish feast and ceremonial customs, and it offers a glimpse into the rich historical ties between the financial heart of London and the British royal family. Number 23. Royal Christenings Royal christenings in the British monarchy are typically conducted with great pomp and tradition. The ceremony traditionally takes place in the music room at Buckingham Palace, a significant royal residence. It's an intimate affair attended by close family members and godparents, with the Archbishop of Canterbury performing the christening. The baby is dressed in a replica of the Huntington Lace Christening Gown, a garment used for generations. After the ceremony, there's often a private gathering for tea, creating a cherished family moment amid the grandeur of royal traditions. Number 24. The Order of the Thistle The Order of the Thistle is Scotland's highest order of chivalry, established in 1687 by King James VII of Scotland, James II of England. It consists of the sovereign and 16 knights, including the monarch, the great master, and the royal family. This order is dedicated to recognizing outstanding service and contributions to Scotland. The emblem of the order, a distinctive thistle, is worn by its members with pride. The ceremonies associated with the order are held in St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh, and new knights are installed in a grand, centuries-old tradition that pays homage to Scotland's rich history and heritage. Number 25. The Royal Standard The Royal Standard is the official flag of the reigning monarch of the United Kingdom. It holds a unique significance as it's raised only when the monarch is present in a particular location, be it a royal residence or an official event. This flag features a combination of the national flags of England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland alongside the royal coat of arms. When the royal standard is hoisted, 
it signifies the immediate presence of the reigning monarch, making it a symbol of authority and a distinctive marker of royal presence, even in today's modern era. From peculiar protocols to fascinating rituals, the royal world is a treasure trove of customs that will leave you in awe. Now it's your turn to join the conversation. Which of these strange royal customs surprised you the most? Do you know of any other peculiar traditions from around the world? Share your thoughts and insights with us in the comments below. If you found the video as fascinating as we did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.